my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher. In today's video, we're going to do another experiment. In today's experiment, we're going to be looking at, can you mess with mass? Now, what is mass exactly? So I'm going to give you a minute to think about that. In today's video, we're going to be using materials. So if you have these materials on hand at home or at school teachers, go ahead and get these materials ready so that you can do this experiment with me. The materials you need will be vinegar, baking soda, a clear small cup, a spoon, plastic bag, scale, and a measuring cup. Gather your materials together and come back so you can have fun finding out if we can mess with mass. Today's experiment is coming from Scholastic Super Science. I have been an advisor with Scholastic Super Science for over five years and thoroughly enjoyed this magazine and so did my students. We're going to be doing Can You Mess With Mass from the February 2018 issue. I will link below in the description box the Scholastic Super Science um, link so that you can go there and do a free trial and see if you can find this uh, particular article. Okay, so in the beginning I asked you what is mass exactly and gave you a few minutes to think about it. So mass is the amount of substance that takes up an object. So let's think about an astronaut. So when an astronaut is in space, the astronaut is weightless. But when the astronaut is back here on Earth, the astronaut weighs a certain amount based on gravity, pulling him or her to the center of the Earth. Now, has their mass changed? Was their mass the same in space as it is on Earth? So we're going to get started with our very first step, which is going to be our hypothesis. Our hypothesis today is, will the mass of vinegar and baking soda change after they have been mixed together? Remember, we're going to be making a chemical reaction, and we talked about this in another video. And so we also want to think about, is this an endothermic or an exothermic process? So, get ready, because we're beginning. First, we're going to pour in one teaspoon of baking soda into the bag. Then we're going to take 20 milliliters of vinegar and I already measured this out, and I'm just going to go ahead and pour it in the cup. Take the cup and carefully put it in your bag. Now, if you're doing this with me and you're a student, you do not want to spill the vinegar in the bag. If you spilled it in the bag, then pause the video and start again. So we're going to seal the bag. I'm going to let that sit. And we're going to turn on the scale and make sure it's on zero. We're going to take the vinegar and the baking soda and put it on the scale and measure. We have 31, nope, let's see. We have 31.5. We're going to record this information so that we have the data to look back at. The next step is to take the two, pour the vinegar into the baking soda. But before I do this, I wanna give you a tip. Um, teachers, you can um, take the students' bags just in case they don't seal it well, so that nothing escapes from the bag, the gases do not escape 
because um, I've seen that in the past uh, where uh, the kids did not seal their bags properly. So uh, just take some tape and uh, seal that before they do this part or even before they do any of it. Okay, so we're going to mix the two together and then we're going to um, wait and see what we come out with. Now, we're weighing the second time with the bag sealed and we came out with 31.5, the same result. Now on this part, teachers, you can ask your students, why is the mass the same? What is the difference that occurred when the bag was sealed and the uh, baking soda and vinegar were mixed together? Also have them touch and feel this part and ask them, is this an endothermic or an exothermic process? How do you know that it is a chemical reaction? Okay, now that you've conducted this part of the experiment, let's talk about your results. Were your results the same? What was your measurement at the beginning before you mix the ingredients? And what was your measurement after you mixed the ingredients? As you observed from what I did, I came out with 31.5 grams both times. Um, so when you think about this and we talk about what mass is, does mass change? Can you mess with it? That is your conclusion. Now we're at the conclusion part. In the conclusion, students can describe what happened to the baking soda and vinegar when mixed together. They can talk about the color, how it feels, um, what type, how did they know if it was a chemical reaction, if it's an endothermic or exothermic process. Also, students can uh, write about what would have happened if they had left the bag open instead of being sealed. Would, they have, would the results be the same? Those are things that they can write in their conclusion. Also, in their conclusion, they can go back and look at their hypothesis and determine, based on their data, if their hypothesis is correct. Also, um, students can write it, I wonder if, at this point, if they're thinking of other things that they would like to test out besides baking soda and vinegar. Well, that's the end of this experiment. I hope you enjoyed this video and you gleaned enough information to feel comfortable teachers going back into your classroom and conducting this experiment. Or if you're a homeschool mom, you would do it with your children. Um, if you like these type of videos, please subscribe to my channel, Michelle Gay Science Teacher. I enjoy these videos because I truly love science. I have been teaching for over 24 years and still to this day my favorite subject is science and anytime I have an opportunity to learn more about science I'm out there doing professional development to continue to enhance my uh, career. So I thank you and blessings to you for coming to visit my channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a wonderful and blessed day.